Good morning and welcome to Life Church. Would you just stand and join us in worship this morning? I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yeah, our God will finish what He started. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Wrote my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I'm not dead, then you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, then you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, then you're not done Greater things are still to come if I'm not dead, then you're not done No, greater things are still to come Oh, I believe This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, oh I'm alive This is my testimony, from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified This is my testimony, this is my testimony
before our lives to raise our voice along heaven and earth alive we've seen your faithful hand your mercy with out and the king who bled and died a god who sacrificed so be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations you are worthy To you, the slain and risen King, we lift a voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. And all through this life we lead, and all through we turn.
trust in Him today Find healing in His sacrifice And I will wait for you I will wait for you Through the storm And through the night And I will wait for you Surely wait for you For your love is my delight I will wait for you I will wait for you Through the storm And through the night And I will wait for you Surely wait for you For your love is my delight of healing from our Lord. We were um, alerted, I guess, or just told of, of a close uh, family friend who was just diagnosed with pancreatic cancer yesterday, the, the Fredericks. And I, I just asked this morning, I know like when we heard, when I heard that last night, and I just thought there are others in this body that are dealing with those kinds of diagnoses maybe right here, right now in this room or watching online. And I just, today, let's do this. Let's stand in faith because Jesus said, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. And some of you may have been seeking that healing for a long time. And I'm just gonna say, let's do it again. Let's ask again. So if you need a touch of healing, it might be just a cold or it might be a cancer diagnosis. Raise your hands up to the Lord right now with me. And let's let faith rise up in our hearts, oh Lord God. You, Jesus, are healer. You healed before. You've healed today and you will heal us tomorrow, Lord. Healing is in your hands, Jesus. And we call to you and we ask for your healing touch. Lord, there's hands raised all across this room, hands raised in living rooms. 
in bedrooms and offices as they're watching online. Lord God, I pray healing over their body in the mighty name of Jesus. That blood of Jesus that is able to heal all of our sins and all of our sicknesses. We proclaim the healing of Jesus over the bodies that are sick in our congregation. Those tied to us by friendship as well. Lord Jesus, heal bodies right now. That cancer be gone. In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. That it be bound and cast out. And Father, that healing, the healing blood of Jesus would flow. Father, I just pray. I just know that you're, you are healing right now. Right now. I just proclaim that healing work in Jesus' name over each and every one. And Father, I just, that healing, that ultimate healing, Lord Jesus, that salvation experience. Father, I just pray that there would be those this morning that would hear the call, that today would be the day of salvation for them, that they would turn to you and be saved, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for coming to meet with us. Thank you for healing. Thank you that you do come and meet with us. May your name be lifted up and glorified and our hearts be ready to hear what you have for us this morning. Lord, I pray that you would just anoint the word that goes forth this morning from Pastor Vondell, that our hearts would be ready to receive and respond in faith. In Jesus' name. your neighbor. Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Anybody thankful for the rain that the Lord sent us? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for providing. Well, this morning, I just want to take a moment to make sure that you have connected with us here at Life Church. So as you come through the doors this morning, you hopefully got a bulletin. On the bulletin has a little connect card that you can fill out and that you can rip off. And I want to speak to some of you that even have been here with us for a long time. If you are not getting like messages on your cell phone, like updating you once in a while about things that are happening here at the church, you're missing something. So if you would take a moment to, to just fill out a connect card, let us know that you wanna be in text in church, we would like to make that connection with you. Another way that some of you might wanna get connected is um, even recently, as Mandy was, was sharing and praying over ones that are sick, our prayer chain, there was um, five something this morning, there was a call that went out on the prayer chain to pray for some people. And so those are areas that you might wanna connect, that you wanna be a part of things. So please take time to fill out one of those cards. Say, just indicate what you're needing. Wanna be in the, in the loop on text and church, wanna join the prayer chain, whatever, just write a note on that. And you could take it to the, the welcome desk or you can drop it in the offering buckets here in a moment. Just make sure that you connect with us. And we're so glad that you're with us. At this time, I wanna take, uh, um, give an opportunity for giving. So if the ushers would come, we want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord through tithes and offerings. Um, as we continue our series through the book of Philippians, we're going to get to the end of the book of Philippians and we're going to actually focus a little bit on some of what's being addressed there about the importance of giving. It's part of our worship to the Lord. It's part of our showing his, our love for him and for other saints. And uh, thank you as you give faithfully, as you tithe, as you give of your means to the work of the Lord. Um, we try to be good stewards of it. And the Lord is, is doing a work here in Williston. And we support missionaries around the world. So your gifts make a big difference. Lord, we just thank you this morning for the opportunity to uh, worship you through giving. We pray, Lord, that as we take those steps of faith and maybe give even in moments where it's like, oh, the bills are coming and, and groceries are expensive. And Lord, we see the promise in your word 
that Lord, when we seek first your kingdom, you'll, you'll take care of the rest. And I pray that all of us, Lord, would, would, would walk in that kind of faith and trust and obedience. And Lord, just supply the needs of your people. And Lord, we just pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would spread through Williston and literally through the nations of the earth. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, the offering is going around. We got some video announcements that we want you to be aware of this morning. Welcome to Life Church. Tonight we are having our monthly church potluck. It'll be in the kids' sanctuary. Enter through door five. If you don't get a chance to say your final farewells and well wishes to Sam and Chloe after church today, please join us tonight. You'll be able to do that there. There will be no Wednesday night service this Wednesday, August 2nd or August 9th. So please Mark that in your calendar so you remember. Spend time with your families, have fun enjoying the rest of the summer before school is back. August 16th is our final block party of the season. Please join us as we try to reach the people in our community. You can sign up for one of the six different teams in the lobby. There's six different areas that you can get plugged in and a description is written for each one out there at the table. Also, we are trying to collect some school supplies to help serve these children in our community. There's a list at the table as well. Please sign up with um, one or a couple of the items that you're able to help with. Uh, we really just wanna give back and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And we thank you for your willingness to help. Well, good morning. It's good to be here together. This morning, we, uh, we've been trying to let you know um, that we, this Sunday we wanted to, uh, to honor uh, Pastor Jacob, uh, the, Pastor Sam, Jacob and his family. And uh, I want to call um, Sam and Chloe up and is Alethea with you? She's in the nursery. Okay. All right. Well, as, as you are hopefully aware, um, Sam and Chloe have been a part of Life Church ministry um, before I got here. Um, Sam has been serving as our discipleship pastor, and Chloe was serving as, as worship pastor. And uh, they have made a, a big impact on Life Church. They have been. Um, you know, obviously, as Chloe's been leading worship and, and then passed the baton off to Emily as our worship pastor, she's done a wonderful job. Sam has done so much of the kind of behind the scenes things, things that you might not be aware of what he's doing, of, of leading the, the first impression teams, getting all that in place, uh, life groups, um, chairing our mission committee. And, and just doing so many of uh, just kind of behind the scenes things that need to be done for the ministry to go on. And uh, now they have um, taken some positions down in Aberdeen, South Dakota. So Sam will be uh, associate pastor there and Chloe's gonna be doing worship part-time. So um, it sounds like it's a, a wonderful fit for them and their family. And this morning, I wanna give a, a special plaque here to, to Sam. It says, Pastor Sam, Life Church Discipleship Pastor, 2019 to 2023. And on the top, there's a running shoe. And it says, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And that's coming from Hebrews chapter 12. So both of these are runners, and Sam has, has uh, been even doing some uh, assistant coaching here with uh, the Williston High School in the cross country, and they're, they're like a really good team, and Sam has been a part of that whole thing. 
And so I think this is very, very appropriate for you, Sam. And I need it back, though, because I want to give it to you next service, too. (laughs) But um, I I would like to call really quick. If I have any pastoral staff that are available, deacons um, and, and their spouses, would you come really quick? We want to pray over them. Tonight, we are doing a potluck at 5.30 in the back part of our church in the kids' sanctuary. And I'm asking you to please come join us. So we're going to provide the chicken and the cake. You provide the rest. And uh, we're going to especially kind of honor them again and just have a a fun family fellowship time together tonight at 5.30. So please come and be a part of that. But we want to pray over you guys. And... You know, if, if you read your Bible, which I hope you do, that this is a common theme in the scriptures where, where God will have somebody doing ministry here and then boom, he will send them somewhere else. And there's times where, where we'll keep in touch and then there'll be times where, hey, we'll meet in heaven, but we're going after this kingdom purpose together. And I'm so grateful and glad that you guys are leaving us to go into another ministry position. Um, Everybody's work is hard and difficult, but I being a pastor get to hear kind of some of the behind the scenes things. There are so many that start out in ministry and never finish because it's hard, because there's spiritual attack, because it's not an easy path. And, and we are so proud of these guys stepping out and being faithful and, and, and running the race. Church, would you stand with us? Would you extend a hand towards them? And we want to pray your blessing over them. Guys, would you surround them? And we're going to pray for them. Lord, we thank you so much for Pastor Sam and Chloe and Alethea for their family. And Lord, we just pray your blessing upon them. Lord, as they step into this new area of ministry, Lord, I pray that a strong anointing would rest upon them. Lord, that they would be filled with your spirit, that they would represent you well. Lord, that they would have vision and direction, that Lord, you'd set them on the rock to see clearly what you want them to do. And Lord, just anoint them and use them. And Lord, may they run the race of faith and be found faithful all the way to the end. God, thank you for all the giftings and talents and ability and anointing you placed upon them. Lord, may it grow. May may your strong hand rest upon them. Lord, go with them. Provide for them. Take care of them. And Lord, may we meet again, but Lord, ultimately, may we be in heaven together. Lord, just sharing the stories, Lord, of what you did. Lord, you're an awesome God. Bless this family. Take care of them, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. (laughs) So, thank you, church. Thank you, deacon board and pastoral staff. Tonight at 530, please join us. Got 200 pieces of chicken coming, so you need to show up. 200 pieces of chicken. So, So, please come. Well, to, this morning we, uh, we finish, no, we don't finish. Sorry, I gotta catch my bearings here. We continue our journey. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. We continue our journey, the in-between, the in-between. And I, as I look around, many of you have been with us this journey. The in-between, here's the rationale. The Christian life, it starts out with a bang. You experience Jesus. You have your sins forgiven. He gives you a fresh start. And then it ends with a bang. You get to go to heaven. You get to see Jesus. You get to be with loved ones who went on before who were trusting in Jesus. But now we're in the in-between. And so the in-between, and we're using the book of Philippians to guide us through. So If you brought your Bible and you like to follow along, you're going to want to go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. The title of this is Rejoice in the Lord Always. Holy Spirit of God, please take this and use this and speak to us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. What if you could get to the place where your eyes were always upon Jesus? What if 
you could rejoice no matter what was going on around you? What if you could get to the place where the whole demeanor of your life is one of rejoicing because God is good and you can trust him 100% of the time? Well, our text this morning, our main text is one verse, Philippians chapter four, verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Paul seems to be having a good day. He seems to be happy. Who, who else would write something like that? Unless you're having a good day, happy. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Of course, we rejoice when we love golfing and we're out on a golf course and it's 75 degrees and there's a gentle east wind blowing. Of course, we rejoice when we're on our fishing boat and the fish are biting. Of course, we rejoice when we need a new pair of sandals and we go online and we find out they're 40% off. Of course we rejoice when we're sitting on our new couch in our freshly painted living room. Of course we rejoice in the Lord. What is going on in Paul's life? Why is he so happy? Why is he rejoicing in the Lord and calling others to rejoice? Well, he's not on a golf course. He's not on a fishing boat. He's not doing some online shopping, and he's not sitting on a new couch. Paul is in prison. And this is not one of those stories where he's in prison because it's his fault. He's in prison because following Jesus led him to prison. Now that's actually very noteworthy this morning. We need to lock that one in our minds. Maybe what Paul is getting at is that rejoicing in the Lord has little to do with our circumstances. Hmm. Paul is in prison, and as he begins chapter four, he says this. We'll go back to verse one. Therefore, my beloved, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. I, I urge Eudea and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. Indeed, true companion, I ask also to help these women who have shared my struggle in the cause of the gospel together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Apparently in the opening verses, there's two gals in the church in Philippi who are having some conflict. They're having trouble getting along. Paul's addressing and hoping that these two women can be reconciled and he's calling somebody else to kind of help them along, help them fix this conflict. Now, it's noteworthy that Paul, in the midst of things like that, is calling people to rejoice. He's not about to let circumstances get him down. If he's in prison, he can rejoice in the Lord. If life within the church gets messy and people are having a little bit of conflict, he can rejoice in the Lord. And can I speak to that for a moment? Church, don't we know that? That, that even within the church, we sometimes step on each other's toes? If I can say this, if you're at Life Church here and you're here only when everything is going really, really good, when nobody offends you, nobody hurts you, nobody does you wrong, if you're only here until that happens and then you're out of here, maybe you should leave now because, because I can tell you what's going to happen. Somebody is going to mess up somebody's gonna step on your toes. Somebody's gonna do something. Somebody's not gonna do something. It's churches are a lot like families. Families are places where people often, even when they don't want to, 
hurt and offend each other. In, in our family, there's, there's some things that we say a lot. You wanna know what they are? I'm sorry and I forgive you. I'm sorry and I forgive you. I can't even tell you how many hundreds of, maybe thousands of times we've had to say those words. I'm sorry and then somebody replies, I forgive you. Paul is dealing with this issue. Two gals are not getting along and he doesn't throw either one of them under the bus, but he's calling them to, hey, let's get these gals reconciled and he calls somebody else to come along to help them through this journey. In the in-between, you're gonna need to hold on to truths like this. Sometimes you might find yourself in prison. Rejoice in the Lord. Sometimes you might find yourself in conflict with somebody. Rejoice in the Lord. Reconcile and then rejoice in the Lord. Are you aware that Paul has been on this rejoice theme really throughout the whole book of Philippians? If you've been reading the book of Philippians as we've been going through this journey, you're gonna see that this is not the first time he's talking about this. In chapter one, Paul is rejoicing that the gospel is being proclaimed even though some people are proclaiming it with less than pure motives. Philippians 1.18, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this I rejoice, yes, and I, I will rejoice. In chapter two, Paul's rejoicing that his life is being poured out as a sacrifice. Hmm. I think it's fair to say that a lot of times we would probably complain when people are taking advantage of us. But here's what Paul writes. Philippians 2, 17 and 18. But even if I am being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with, all, with you all. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. Later on in chapter two, Paul is anticipating the rejoicing that's gonna take place when Epaphroditus shows up. And kind of the backstory is Epaphroditus had been sick, really sick. He writes Philippians 2, 28 and 29, therefore I have sent him all the more eagerly so that when you see him again, you may rejoice and I may be less concerned about you. Receive him then in the Lord with all joy and hold men like him in high regard. Then in chapter three, He's rejoicing as he gets ready to, to launch into a teaching on the excellency of Christ in Philippians 3, 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me and it is a safeguard for you. Then in chapter four, he's calling the people to rejoice. And in case they missed it the first time, he repeats himself. And this is our text this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always again, I will say rejoice. And then later in chapter four, Paul's rejoicing because of the generosity of the believers in Philippi. This is Philippians 4.10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. What's the deal with this guy? What's the deal with Paul? Like, why is he rejoicing about all kinds of things? Maybe he really means it when he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Hmm. Notice the wording. Notice what it says and what it doesn't say. It says rejoice in the Lord. It does not say rejoice in your circumstances. There's a difference. Your circumstances are likely to go up and down and all around. If you've been on a roller coaster, that's probably a good depiction of your circumstances in life. You're up, you're down, you're all around. But 
your God is a rock. He is steady, he is dependable, he's completely trustworthy. We can rejoice in him because he is good all the time. And all the time he is good. It helps to know the character and the nature of God. We refer to this as the the attributes of God. This is what God is like. Let, Let me give you some of these this morning. God is infinite. He's self-existing, without origin. Psalm 147, 5. Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. God is immutable. He never changes. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Forever. God is self-sufficient. He has no needs. John 5, 26. For just as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. Matthew 19, 26. And looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. Hebrews 4.13, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Psalm 139, 7 through 10, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell on the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. God is wise. Romans eleven thirty three. 33. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and and unfathomable his ways. God is faithful. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousandth generation with those who love him and keep his commandments. God is good. Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. God is just. Deuteronomy 32, 4. The rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteousness and upright is he. God is merciful. Romans 9, 15 through 16. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Are you catching it? Your God is really, really good. God is gracious. Psalm 145, 8. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. God is loving. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who, who does not love does not know God for God is love. God is holy. Re- Revelation 4, 8. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within, and day and night they do not cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. God is glorious. Habakkuk 3, 4. His radiance is like the sunlight, and he has rays flashing from his hand, and there is, and there is the hiding of his power. You and I can and should rejoice in the Lord always. There is nothing, there is nobody like him. He is perfect and awesome in every way. Our verse this morning told us, rejoice in the Lord. 
It didn't say rejoice in your circumstances. But did you notice what it also said? When should you rejoice in the Lord? When should you rejoice in the Lord? Did it say Sunday at 9 a.m.? Did it say Sunday at 11 a.m.? Wednesday night at 6.30? When you're sitting at your favorite restaurant, favorite meal right in front of you, you're praying a blessing over the food, did it, it did, no, when? What did it say? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Always? You mean to tell me in moments where maybe you're being falsely accused, you're having, you're, you're, you're having real difficulties with a situation, a relationship, said always. You mean when you go to the doctor's office and you get a bad report? It said always. You mean when there's tension in, in your home or your workplace and, and you're having to kind of work through a mess? It said always, always. But here, here's the stance we often take. Well, of course I'll rejoice in the Lord when he does this or that for me. Of course I'll rejoice in the Lord when this problem goes away. Of course I'll rejoice in the Lord when the situation changes. I dare say this morning that Paul is challenging that type of thinking. We are not to let our circumstances control our rejoicing. We are to let our rejoicing in the Lord begin to override our circumstances. The, the Greek word that's originally used there for rejoice is the word kairo, kairo. And so yes, rejoice is one of the ways it's translated, but it also could be translated to be cheerful, to be glad, to be calmly happy or well off. So let's, let's kind of use the, some of those words this morning. So rejoice in the Lord could also be said like be cheerful in the Lord or be calmly happy in the Lord or be well off in the Lord. This will bring a lot of honor to God when you and I find ourselves in tough situations and church, you will, you will, it's part of the in-between, you will find yourself in tough situations it will bring a lot of glory to God, a lot of honor, when you're going through tough situations and you're cheerful in the Lord. You're calmly happy in the Lord. You're well off in the Lord. Paul seems to have found something rather special. He seems to have a faith and a trust and a focus on God so that even in prison, he can rejoice in the Lord. In the in-between, if you're going to make it through the in-between, you're going to need to rejoice in the Lord. You're going to need to rejoice in the Lord. Not just it's a good option if you do. It, you will need to rejoice in the Lord. Because rejoicing in the Lord will help center you. It will help center you. Because... Life will often try to get you off balance as things kind of hit you from the right and they hit you from the left and, and it's before you know it, you're, you're, you're off balance. But rejoicing in the Lord helps you balance. It helps set things right. Church, I know it's the nine o'clock Hopefully you had your coffee this morning. Church, you and I have reason to rejoice. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. If you have had your sins forgiven, rejoice. Yes. Rejoice. If you have Jesus with you and Jesus promises to never leave you or forsake you, rejoice. If you have a Savior who died on a cross for you and then on the third day rose from the dead, rejoice. 
if you serve a savior who is the healer, he who is the very author of life, rejoice. If you have a shepherd who promises to lead you, guide you, provide for you, rejoice. If you have a God who has given you precious promises and these promises are yes and amen in Christ, rejoice, rejoice. Now, in case anybody's here this morning feeling like they're on the outside looking in, if somebody's here this morning feeling like you, they really have no basis to rejoice because you don't have Jesus with you, then I want to remind you of an invitation that Jesus gives because the invitation goes out to you. Jesus himself said this. I'll invite the worship team to come. Jesus said this, John 7, 37 and 38. On the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Maybe there's somebody here who like, I don't have any reason to rejoice because I don't think I have Jesus with me and I feel like my life is just dry and empty and I'm not satisfied, something's missing. Jesus says to you, come, come, come and drink. Then Jesus said this in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Is there anybody out here who's feeling weary and heavy laden? Jesus says, come, come, I'll, I'll give you rest. So this morning, what I'm trying to get at is there's really no reason that anyone should leave this sanctuary this morning without rejoicing in the Lord. Because even if you're kind of like on the outside looking in, please hear the words of Jesus. Jesus is saying, you don't have to be on the outside looking in. You, you can come in. You can come and partake. This is for you. This salvation is for you. This life, having a relationship with the living God it is for you. you. You were created for this. That's why you're here this morning. Because God has been drawing you and reaching out to you. And so this morning, if, if somebody feels like they're on the outside looking in, what do you do? Where do we go from there? Well, I wanna put it in these terms. Come to the cross. We wanna, can we put that slide up there if we got it? Come to the cross. It was, I know it came in a little later than some of the other slides. It was, it was slide 29. It's okay, I'll, I'll tell you. So think of the word cross. C-R-O-S-S, -S, you know, like an acrostic. C, like where, where would I start? What, what do I do if I feel like I'm on the outside looking in? How do, I, how do I activate my faith? How do I receive this salvation? Well, first confess your sins. Confess your sins. The, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sins. Then the R, repent. Repent, it's, it's having a change of mind where you come in agreement with God, where you say, yeah, sin is not okay. God, you say that's wrong, and yes, I agree with you, that's wrong. Another way to look at it is, it's turning to God. It, it's, it's turning from your sin to God. So instead of letting sin be on the throne of your life, you say, no, no, no that sin's gotta get off that throne. And I want Jesus to have the throne. 
Oh, open up your heart. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Open the door of your heart. S, with your mouth declare, state Jesus is Lord. And then begin to serve your king. The last S, serve your king. So before we go on, is there anybody this morning who has felt kind of like on the outside looking in, but you, you're ready to say yes to Jesus this morning? You're ready to invite Jesus into your life? Could you just raise a hand if that's you? Because I want to lead in a prayer. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anyone? Okay. Well, let's pray. Especially if you raised your hand, please join me in this prayer. In, in church, you can just spend some time with Jesus right now. Lord Jesus, we confess that we are sinners. We have sinned many times in many ways. Forgive us. And Jesus, with your help, we repent of our sins. We, we turn to you, Jesus. We don't want sin to be controlling our life. We want you to control our life. Jesus, we turn to you. And Jesus, we open up the door of our heart. We say, Jesus, come in. Come in. And take your rightful place as the king of our life. And Jesus, with our mouth, we declare, Jesus is Lord. And Jesus, will you be our Lord, my Lord, my Savior, my King. And Jesus, help me to serve you from this point on. Now, church, what do we do with a teaching like this from Philippians 4.4? 4? Well, one, rec one recommendation is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. You could let your circumstances control your life, your mood, your level of joy. Or you could rejoice in the Lord always and let him deal with the circumstances. Church, I think you know the right answer. Would you stand with me, please? And if you have a reason to rejoice in the Lord as the worship team leads us back, the altars are open. If you want to rejoice in the Lord back there, or you want to rejoice in the Lord up here, I think it'd be very appropriate to rejoice up here, but wherever you want to rejoice in the Lord, let's leave this morning rejoicing in the Lord. So we've got time. Please rejoice in the Lord. Worship team. sing this with me we worship we worship the god who was we worship the god who is we worship the god who evermore will be he opened the prison doors he parted the raging sea my god he holds the victory sing there's joy in the house there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise Oh, 
sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. I sing a little louder. text this morning said rejoice in the Lord always again I will say rejoice and I'm going to suggest that that wasn't just a suggestion that God is telling his people do this this is how you're going to make it through the in-between if every time circumstances get a little wonky, you lose your faith and you get your eyes off Jesus and you get your eyes on the problem, well, one, the enemy is going to have a heyday with that. And next, you're going to get off balance really quick. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is how we're going to make it through the in-between. And your God is faithful. He's faithful. He is the author and the perfecter of faith. And don't be surprised when the in-between is hard. He told us it was going to be hard. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This evening, 5.30, we have a potluck. 200 pieces of chicken. You need to come eat some of those pieces of chicken. Uh, there's a table in the foyer that had been set up for uh, Pastor Sam and Chloe in case you wanted to stop by, leave anything for them, or come join tonight. Tomorrow, or next Sunday, something special. Um, Darren Peterson, who is part of our congregation, formerly he pastored in Tioga, and now he is doing Youth for Christ ministry here in Williston. He is going to be preaching the word next Sunday. So please come and be a part of that. Uh, the next two Wednesdays, we don't have anything going on. We're given a little bit of a, a summer break. So for leaders and volunteers and families, just enjoy the next two Wednesdays to, to connect as a family. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless.